Hey everyone, this is Michael Linehan here uh, with the Be Your Own Boss podcast. Today I'm joined by Michael Russell. Uh, Michael works in the fitness industry and uh, thanks for coming on Michael. Thank you for having me. No hassle at all, right? Um, would you like to tell us a little bit about what you do um, and how you got into business? Yeah, so my name is Michael Russell. I'm um, working in a gym at the moment. It's Obodo, previously Cross of Return. We rebranded because we offer so much more than just CrossFit. Yeah. We've expanded, we do Money Fit, and there, there's a load of other kind of classes that we offer, so we've changed the, the umbrella name to offer all that and not cause confusion. Yeah. I got into health and fitness industry a couple of years ago because it's something that I've always loved. Mm. When I was younger, I was playing rugby the whole way up through primary school, through secondary school, but it was something that literally took over life in, in secondary school. It was, it was the be all and end all. I went to a rugby school, so it was go to the gym before school. Then you've got your, your academic side, you go on to the pitch after, then you supervise study. So it was, it was 14 hour days. Yeah. It was long. And come kind of sixth year, first year college, I played a small bit after, work, after school, but I kind of fell out of love with it. But kind of fourth or fifth year in school, I started going to the gym just because out of just something else to do. And immediately I fell in love with it. Yeah. The style of training was kind of that bodybuilding, doing your chest and tries, back and body, <laughs> changing, whatever you want. I know, no, we've switched on to five day full body splits. Exactly. Now, you know, we're a bit, bit, it's completely it's, different. It's different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've developed. I get it all, you were a bro. <laughs> exactly. 100% <laughs> bro sessions all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't have the legs to show it, but. <laughs> Um, it's alright by fucking I <laughs> see these calves like, <laughs> I'd buy a pair if I could like. <laughs> if there was a cosmetic clinic in town doing calf implants like, I'd be the first yeah, customer there's plenty of cosmetic like. clinics but we're yeah. not there yet calf implants lads if any of you <laughs> fucking looking for a business idea I'd be your first customer <laughs> so after that I like I'll throw my hand at anything I did a load of sports yeah. but the next thing that I kind of wanted to try and loved was rock climbing. Yeah. So I went into indoor uh, indoor climbing and a small bit of outdoor climbing, but it didn't give me the same kind of stimulus and the same love of getting the heart rate up, getting yeah. a big sweat, which I always Same endorphin rush. Like. Absolutely. Yeah. And a sense of achievement after, like, because with the climbing, it is brilliant and you, you set your roots and you, 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 you accomplish them, but you'd be sitting there for 20 minutes after with a massive iron pump and you're like, we have to wait and it's go up again. Yeah. So it was a lot of a waiting around and it was something that my active mind didn't enjoy. Yeah. So next thing I wanted to try was the CrossFit and immediately it was exactly that. My yeah. first day in, went hell for leather, I was in a heap and couldn't wait for the next one. It's mm. it's your cliche how people talk about it and it was exactly what happened. Like yeah. I, I loved it. And then my my love for it and my love of movement then started to develop and then over the last couple of years I've been like they took me on as an uh, as an intern and just put my time into it started coaching and I, I know I'm managing inside there but during COVID I had time to then think about what I wanted to do for myself as well so I was doing PTs inside there but I didn't have the the time to do it so late at night so I was doing kind of one or two PTs yeah. but I wanted to be able to spend a lot of time with one individual to try and improve their quality of life yeah. I wanted to improve how they moved and teach them about their body as well yeah. it's hard to do that in class when you could have 15-20 people mm. you do your best and each person gets time with a coach yeah. but to, to show people how they move and show people exactly what they want to be doing and focusing on their goals to then program for what they for want. It, yeah, because I'd imagine if you're great, it's like anything in business, if you're trying to scale it, you have to in some way kind of like operationalize it and like kind of, uh, I suppose, remove friction in certain areas. So you're actually kind of creating, in some senses, somewhat of a cookie cutter. Like yeah. only by like you be able to fit in that many people so I'd imagine that the one-on-ones give you that opportunity to actually like just what are your specific needs exactly yeah. and so many people come to me and they're like just want to get fit I want to get healthy I want to 
get bigger, get stronger, bulk and lose weight at the same time. But it's it's then like that that's not possible to do it all in one go. It's not impossible to put on so it's 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 extremely difficult to put on size and lose body fat yeah. and get fitter. And that. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's it's funny though because like you kinda of trick yourself into thinking that you are doing it where you could like do you know that saying the best way to look like you've added ten pounds is to lose ten pounds. So like is Absolutely and and once like you, you teach people that and you show people that and you educate them on on that and then they understand and they give they trust you then yeah to to let to, to lead them in the way that that you f- see fit so like exactly that you get them to lose a small bit of weight then they're they're not worried they think that by putting on size it'll make them look leaner mm. whereas instead if you just help them to lose a small bit of body fat they look lean and they're happy yeah and then I, I actually what i found myself is i was telling you that i've a pretty easy enough time i suppose relative to the next person in terms of actually uh, staying lean uh, i found that when you stay lean and you're actually fairly strict on staying lean the positive benefit you actually get from just seeing small bits of incremental progress is huge like mm. you know, so that's it's it, it's interesting though how you were kind of getting at how if you educate someone and if they come at things the right way, you can actually make it just that bit more of a positive experience. Like it was kind of like when I educated myself on, I didn't need this crazy big surplus. I know we're getting, I'm going a bit heavy here on the fitness side of it, but uh, that I didn't need this crazy big surplus to actually see muscle gain. Then I could actually stay in a body shape that I liked year round while making incremental progress. But that came from the education. And, and it's it's slow, slow and controlled is improve longevity and, and it's all about it because like these massive fad diets that people go on and they cut carbs from their diet so they lose all the water weight and you get lean pretty quickly but the minute you put a carb back in yeah water goes in and then it, it, it can be detrimental to people's mindset again yeah because they're not educated in what mm. is actually going on in the science behind their body yeah so it's 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 just keeping people educated it's keeping people happy about it and just getting them to trust you and it's building it's building relationship and building rapport it's not always going into the like the science behind it it's getting them to trust you one of the other guests i had actually uh touched on the exact same thing it's a uh, kiwi cuts he's a barber up there uh, just up the road yeah um and he said that like the level of trust that he has with his clients like they could tell him everything that at times he kind of even he absorbs quite a bit and he has to like has to have very strict confidentiality around what you know he'll ever he like he can't say anything back to other people because he knows that for him in his business model trust is actually everything absolutely and like sometimes people will come and they're like i'm not in the mood but you know they're there to vent yeah and you, if they're getting two for the price of one you're getting a counselor and you're getting a trainer like. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> but but that, that's what you take on as a job role as well like and that's how people build trust. They can talk to you. You can offer advice if you want to offer advice, or you can just sit there and listen. Mm. They'll they'll do their work and they'll be like, "Thanks a million. I got more out of that than than what I actually thought." Or like I, I had someone say to me the other day that they wanted to give me more money because mm. they they benefited more out of what they paid. They they thought the value was a lot more because yeah. they were able to talk as well. So it's and I enjoy that side of it. Mm. I. I don't want it to be there and be like, you have to do this, you have to do five sets of this, and you have to do this, and, and just kind of sit back. Yeah. I want to have a ca- have a chat. It, it brings the enjoyment into it, and it makes me love my job. Like That's brilliant. Um, I guess, aside from the actual one-on-ones then that you do with people, like is there any scalable element to your business then, in terms of like you know drawing in large numbers and kind of... Well, doing my online programming, so that was the first thing I went into, was once... We went into lockdown. Lockdown. I was using my Instagram to, um, put up online workouts. I wanted to like, some people were loving it, and I wanted to see what engagement there was. Yeah. Online workouts and, the gym in general isn't for everyone. Yeah. But you can't cater for everyone. Mm. You can cater to what y- you're doing. Like, there's no point in me saying do a Zumba class and I don't do Zumba. Do you know, mm. I I was, putting out what what I know, <laughs> mm-hmm. and if there's people out there that were enjoying it then they were kind of saving it and I was seeing that, that, that there was. So then I knew that there was a market for online programming. Yeah. So that was the first thing I went into. 
I started offering online programming for people and it's something now that is growing week by week. Yeah. Um, people are beginning to learn that you don't have to go to the gym to, to get a good workout. Yeah. Or like so many people invest in, in gym equipment. Yeah. And, and it'd be a shame to just give it all up now that the, the gyms are back. Absolutely. Yeah. And like you can go to the gym for an hour, but realistically it's two hours of your day. Yeah. It's half an hour to get in, it's an hour workout, half an hour to go. You spend an hour in, while well, you're in there for that hour, you could be walking around for kind of 15, 20 minutes or chatting. And you've got, like I suppose, the pre and post workout meals actually even kind of factor into the whole equation as well. Like really Absolutely. when you think about it. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and you can do that whole thing at home in 45 minutes to an hour. Yeah. And a lot of people are, are beginning to realise that now. Gyms are opening up and I don't think they're as busy as we had anticipated. I, no, they're not. Absolutely not. But it was interesting for me because I did invest in the home equipment as well. Um, and I made some of the best progress I've made with just a set of 10 kgs and 20 kg dumbbells. Yeah. Um, I got into one of the best physiques I've ever had. But there was something about getting under a fucking heavy bar <laughs> that I craved. Yeah. You know and, what and I mean? I, I, I'm, in, I'm in a lucky position where I was able to invest... Yeah. And and bought full full gym basically, but I bought a barbell, bought a hundred and four hundred and sixty euro, hundred and sixty kilo worth of plates. Yeah. A rack, everything. But that didn't come till the end of May. I've never been fitter yeah. than I have been since lockdown. Like I I'm at the fittest I've ever been. I had one dumbbell and one box and one kettlebell. Yeah. The amount you can do with it and it's just changing your mindset again, like I've, I've talked about it so much over the last couple of days because I've really been delving into my own mindset and it's just changed that it's not like oh I only have one one dumbbell like there's no focus on what you do have exactly yeah, yeah. and that, that was one of the things we actually talked about off camera as well and I have one thing that I think transfers directly over into how you started your business because where a lot of people saw that obviously I don't want to minimise the terrible impact COVID has had on people's lives, their family members, their businesses. But I mean, for say, average person our age, um, where some saw uh, no opportunity, you saw opportunity and you pounced on it. Um, yeah. Would you be able to kind of share a little bit more about that? Yeah, like there, there's always, if you're, if you're willing to, to try and willing to invest time into it, there is opportunities in most things we do. Like mm. there's a negative situation with COVID of course, and I was fortunate enough that I didn't have anyone sick or no one passed yeah. away or anything like that. But I was sitting at home, I was sitting on the couch. Most days I was doing the online classes and stuff from the gym, but there was also a chance for me to, I knew people were engaging with my workouts. I knew people wanted more. Mm -hmm. There was people with the same desire as me to keep fit or get fitter. So they couldn't go to the gym to do it. So. I then knew there was an opportunity to provide programming, to provide mm. support for people to, to keep up their fitness and improve their fitness. And I was getting messages from people that did my programming saying they've never been fitter. In the last four years, there's, there's a couple doing it and they've been going to the gym for four years. They were living in England, they came back to us and they were doing my programming and they said they're absolutely loving it, continuing the programming and they've never been fitter. It's things like that. If I was programming for just the two of them, I'd continue it. Yeah. Like it's, I'm not. I'm not trying to do it to build an empire or anything like that. I'm doing it to improve people's quality of life. Yeah. And you've got a sense of purpose to your work. Absolutely. Yeah. Because if you don't, it's. You don't have the love for it. You don't have to put the time into it if you're just doing it for money. Absolutely, I agree completely, and it's that's what always fascinates me about the kind of the. I see a lot of people buy into conspiracy theories about the wealthy and the rich and I kind of think, honestly, you don't actually get driven to the extent of working as hard as they do if it's just for the money. Absolutely. There's like, I mean, the positive impact you can make by creating something from nothing and doing something that's purpose driven. is yeah. just money becomes irrelevant to them after a certain point. Yeah. And they're making billions and doing this and but like, what's an extra billion to them or an extra million to them? But they're still working 14, 15 hour days. They're yeah. doing it because they love it. 
I think we all have this kind of inbuilt evolutionary mechanism, call it the universe, call it spirituality, call it what you want, where it's like collaboration is key. Uh, you know, doing something for your fellow man. Mm. And it really drives you on. It's one of the most fulfilling things you can do. Um, for example, like when we started Signature with the shirts, um, I guess for me, I was going through, uh, I was in a job that I like, I was traveling quite a bit around the world and what always got on my tits was the fucking clothes I was wearing, you know? Just having to iron them and just like the feeling of yeah. wearing like traditional shorts and stuff like that. And I was just like, if I can make the already stressful lives of a lot of people just that little bit, just a little bit more seamless. Absolutely. That was a win for me. Like, you And know? It, it, it doesn't change, it, it doesn't make it a little less stressful. It makes it a lot, it, it, it makes it a lot more, less stressful not a little less stressful well you're a movement stressful. professional so like uh, yeah there may be people might say hey, I was a bit more biased in this podcast uh, <laughs> but like <laughs> tailored off the rack for movement <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, it's something that I've gone to a few weddings over the last two or three years and a few kind of corporate things and either I put the, the, the cuffs up or I take off the, the waist jacket or anything like that and it's just bundled mm. and I literally I, this is not we haven't talked about this or anything but it honestly is an unbelievably com comfortable shirt and <laughs> it's class I actually love it do you know why you could just hold that there for the entire day in the pocket <laughs> that's your voice no? yeah yeah exactly <laughs> but it is brilliant I, yeah. I'm, I'm mad about it because it's I've been looking for something like that and you always see like the the top people the like McGregor and everyone stuff and he wears those kind of stuff and you're like fuck it I can never afford anything like that and it's an affordable thing. yeah that's actually how we started out the I suppose the pricing model and everything was we kind of looked at a you know movement the watch company yeah. they they started with a really kind of uh, fundamental part of their I suppose business model was making the luxuries of uh, a really wealthy middle aged person possible for somebody who is of the younger generation. Yeah. You know, so it was kind of like cutting out the retailer, or going direct to the uh, the supplier, going direct to consumer, that you were able to actually pass on that little experience of luxury at a, a more affordable price. So yeah, that's exactly like when you're saying that and the whole McGregor thing, it's it's interesting because that's exactly how we were thinking about it from the business model when, when we started. Yeah. Um, it's it's, it's so clearly, uh, as you've started getting more into business, it's, it's funny how... Anytime I get into these conversations, I just find such an overlap in ways of thinking about things with people even who are in completely different industries um, but have started their own thing. Mm. Because it's almost like you kind of, um, I think I described it when I was on the, the podcast with Kiwi. It was, it's almost like you know you, you watch The Matrix and you've got the blue pill and the red pill. And you go into the big bad world, start yeah. your business, you've swallowed that red pill. You know, or yeah, at least you're yeah. starting to chew it. <laughs> and, uh, really? Yeah, and there's a, there's a very different way of looking at things that you actually just have to adopt to survive. There's no more kind of relying on other people. Uh, certainly not relying on the government. No, <laughs> but it's, it's the, the want and the desire to rely on yourself as well. Yeah. That's the kind of push. There can be more difficult days. It mm. can be very stressful days. Yeah. But it makes you if, if it's something you want to do, it'll make you push on. Yeah. Um like thinking about budgets, thinking about what you need to do to get the next step can be stressful and it can be easy to, to just be like that. Ah, I can be bothered anymore. Yeah. But knowing that if you do this thing, if it pays off, it's it's an achievement, it's it's an it's incredible and it can impact other people a whole lot more yeah. and you can impact impact more people. Yeah. And it's, it's that that really raised me like. I find that it's really helped me in to stop overthinking trivial things in life. You know, like say when you're faced with those kind of like really uh, stressful situations uh, more frequently and they, they kind of mean more to your livelihood than say if you were somewhat sheltered because I know, you know, obviously your livelihood can still be impacted by your decisions in employment not saying it isn't, but mm. it's just that little bit more, uh, I suppose, there's a bit more risk to it when you're, when you're self-employed or when you're, it's a bit more real, right? Yeah. The risk. Yeah. When you're faced with that and confronted with it on a daily basis, um, it 
it's almost like it's training you to um, then not make such a big deal of some of the other things that happen in your life. You Completely, I mean? and it's it it's it's not letting those things take your time. Yeah. Like it's it's exactly it's exactly that. It's there's so many things that could have come up and be like you could spend half an hour thinking about it and you think about it, you come up with a thing and be like, like why did I bother wasting thirty minutes of that when it could have been time just relaxing? Yeah. Exactly, you know? yeah. Um because you can sit home, you can you can watch the T V and something comes up on the news that it's it nothing to do with you, it's nothing you can control, it's nothing that's going to affect your life. But you think about it and it stresses you out and then you're like, what's the point? Like I try not to, to watch the news as much as a, as I yeah as I can. I don't watch it at all. I don't even have a TV. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just genuinely have no interest. If if something's going to affect me, it'll I'll know about it. Yeah. If not, then I'd rather not know about it and deal with things that I can control. Mm. It's a really interesting concept actually about only focusing on the things that you can control. Um, I found that that's actually crucial to keeping your sanity when you're trying to do something on your own because otherwise there are actually potentially a million reasons why you'll never make it. Well, I suppose make it in terms of whatever you value as success, yeah, right? Exactly, so yeah. whether that's coaching people one-on-one, -on -one, whether it's scaling to be the next fashion empire, or is yeah. it yeah 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 <laughs> oh, yeah actually when I fashion or style style empire <laughs> don't even know my own business but um uh whatever however you define the lens of success and whatever your end goal is if you're focusing on things you can't control there's potentially a million and one reasons why you can't do it I see this all the time with say I've had situations where people say it's fine for you to say because of the the money you're earning and I kind of look back and I say well. Yeah, I'm earning good money now in what I do in consultancy, but like what you didn't see was like I came from, you know, working class background in the north side, you know, with a very loving family, but it, it certainly wasn't anywhere privileged or any, there wasn't any unfair advantages. I mean, about 10%, I want to say, not even, of my uh, final year in school went on the third level that year, you know, so it definitely wasn't the. Uh, any kind Achieving, of advantage yeah, yeah, or, yeah. Yeah, and uh, to get to where I am I worked three jobs at one point to get over to the, the United States and I remember even all through school I used to spend six to eight hours on my homework at night sometimes and spending like most weekends studying when I was in college and um, I kind of find that there's this sense of entitlement at times that can creep in um, where people are kind of focused on shit that they can't control and overlooking the things that they can yeah. which is how you spend your time uh, what do you give priority to you know and, and what action do you take every day yeah and it's I find that a lot of people that do that are people that are looking for excuses to not pursue what they want or, or pursue the things that they should be doing mm. um, like starting Equo Athletics my, my PT brand my PT company it's it was something that I could control. I wasn't saying that I don't have a gym to to bring people and do PTs with. I, I can't meet them face to face. I can set up Zoom calls. I can email them out their their um their program and I can video movements mm. and get them to video their movements and I can critique critique that way. Yeah. Those are things that I can control. Yeah. So you find again, find out Can't control the Wi-Fi though, so why bother? There we go. <laughs> this is right. There we go. We're packing it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but these are all things that I can do. So, again, trying that and it's 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 the first step. Then you 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 discover other things you can do because of those. Yeah. And it it's exciting. Mm. Like, this has all been exciting. I've been coming up with new ideas and new new things that I can do to to scale my business again. Yeah. Yesterday, my girlfriend was like, why are you smiling? Like, it, what's wrong with you? I was like, I just thought of another idea. Yeah. <laughs> Which is probably really annoying, but yeah. it's, again, finding opportunities and not, like, these are all things that I've never done before. Yeah. So I could be like, well, I've never done before. I'm not going to, I have an notion. I want to learn. I want to improve and I want to progress my own mindset and yeah. my own skill set. Yeah. But so easily I could be like, oh, 
I, I have my client base, I'll just leave it at that and keep them and that's that. I find though once you get started really, it, it's, it really takes something to be able to just disregard the kind of expectations you've set in yourself and to not try your best once you've started down the path of doing something on your own because it's like you you can never go back mm. once you kind of found that uh, that creativity that just you know being able to explore your own ideas because you're now working for yourself you're the master of your own time it's, it's your own reputation own. in your own head yeah it's how you value yourself as well like if you have an employer you can kind of take a back seat because in the, in like in a certain way like they they have full responsibility yeah whereas if you're starting something yourself if you half ass it it's never going to never going to go yeah. but and it's it's how you kind of value yourself in your head if you if you give it full potential you'll you'll always be happy to a certain extent i think even if it fails if you go 100% you'll learn something from it anyway absolutely absolutely the amount of things that i've learned over the last few years um and also, I think it's fair to say that, like, if you start something up, right, there is no, no one, like, pushing these timelines on you to make it a success anytime soon. It's okay to, like, kind of, you know, go up and down and up and down through that journey, but just stay in it. Yeah. I think is the best thing because you're, you're going to learn something. Completely. Longer, and I have my, my Instagram ready to go. I have, we know, one or two things that might make it a bit better. But again, I'm not pushing it out just to get it out there. Yeah. I'm happy to wait. I'm happy to, to slowly put it out there and then try and build a bit more uh, of an engagement again and a bit more of a business and, and slowly build it up. But every so often I'm putting a small bit out there and putting a small bit on my own Instagram about Equaletics yeah. just to, to keep it ticking over. And there, no one needs it to be thrown into their face. Mm. No one wants that. And I, I think... For me anyway, it won't it won't turn over into kind of profit or it won't turn over into sales. It's interesting actually, so I suppose uh, do you have you done quite a bit in terms of uh, upskilling yourself in inbound marketing? No, I'm not. Like that. So it's it basically the concept is what you just described, you know, you don't push it at the customer, you're not into the outbound selling. You're educating the customer, you're putting little pieces of useful bits of content and letting them come to you mm -hmm. off the value that you're providing. Yeah, yeah, and I think a lot of that has, if indirectly, that's, I suppose that's what I've been doing because by the content that I've been putting out, I'm actually getting referrals as well. So yeah. from, from other people have told people that haven't seen my Instagram, I don't have a huge following on Instagram, but from the following that I have, they have recommended me and I've got two or three clients from that as well. Yeah. So it's, it's putting out content that I find will inform people and educate people and which has then worked it's not just throwing out anything and throwing out my brand as much as possible it's it's always trying to educate and always trying to put something out useful mm. instead of just something for the sake of it it's a big problem actually at the moment well not at the moment it's always been a problem in fact if anything actually this is one of the best times to be educating yourself uh on fitness because information is so freely available whereas before it was gated by like the big magazines and like you know those publications that just it was you know one month's edition it was like your guide to perfect abs exactly and Seven then the next month it was the it was completely something else it was like no you have to do tabata training yeah and and anyway who can pay the most money to get their thing in there yeah and it's it's just not true like it's it's you have to focus on your diet you have to do this there's no one exercise or one thing that you can do to try and yeah to improve one thing it's and one food or one diet as well as like the that's the <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and again it's subjective to everyone some people react better to low carbs high yeah. fats some people are complete opposite and it's it's taking the time to invest and learn about your body yeah you're not going to get it first straight away. No. You have to. It's all trial and error, and it's it's not being short sighted. You have to be long sighted. You have to be in it for the long game. Uh, yeah, if you're not going to adhere to it, then it's fucking mindless. But like, and and so like, we we've all done it. I've got a holiday in six weeks. I want to to lose the to lose the weight. 
But beef is shreds. <laughs> and you go, you go, and within three hours, you're after two pizzas and ten beers. Yeah, yeah. And you're bloated and you're gone. Mm. Like, it's it's great. You get that one photo and it goes up on Instagram, and then you you couldn't care less after that. But had you done it six months ago and went in for the long game, learned how how your diet works, then you can have a beer, you have your pizza, you can do that, and that's what, that's what I found anyway. Um, Absolutely. And it's what's been a game changer for me is flexible dieting, that whole concept. You know, as long as you're hitting your nutritional requirements, um, after that, if you make it up, the rest of your kind of budget up with whatever you want. Yeah. What's wrong with that? Absolutely. And it's each their own. I'm like that as well. I, I hit my protein goals and I hit my calorie goals. Yeah. What I take in then after that. I, I enjoy eating pizzas. I enjoy eating. We enjoy drinking beer. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, I, I always do it. Yeah. And I, I'm not going to restrict myself unless I'm trying to challenge myself for something. Mm. But I'm, again, I'm fitter than I've ever been. I'm more comfortable in my skin than I've ever been. Mm. And I'm eating what I, more or less what I like. Yeah. I don't go to bed hungry. I don't go to bed overly full. I have the chocolate, can of coke, whatever, and I'm loving my training. I find that that approach, it's so interesting to me how, say like that works for you and it also works for me, right? I, I was a chronic like binge eater when I was younger. So I used to like, on a regular occasion, I would literally consume nearly 10,000 calories like you know people put up these 10,000 calorie challenges on YouTube and I'm looking at it going pussy challenge like, accepted yeah when I was younger like genuinely I was like I, I had a you know technically uh, you know my mom says I oh, was a bit chubby I was obese like by the the metrics yeah, you know like yeah. they use for it um, but I used to diet midweek and then I'd fucking binge at the, the weekend and breaking down that fear of having the one or two things and get letting go of the guilt yeah like was just and, crucial and that's like i had this conversation with someone only the other day like that monday to friday thing where you're dieting it's probably too restrictive for you and probably. you're not allowing yourself you, sh- you could have an extra 200 calories and you wouldn't binge yeah or at the weekend even like i remember times where i was bulking on clean foods right <laughs> Sorry, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, no, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, eating drastically less than what I probably even should have been cutting on. Because mm. I just had no, you know, there was this whole there's the diet food and there's the you're a fat slob food. Yeah, and, exactly. Yeah. And, and, and that's probably why it threw my eyes up to heaven. Like, what's clean? What's, what's dirty food? Like, yeah. it's completely what you have in your mind and what these big companies who have all the money are trying to push their and push their product which is clean yeah everything in moderation is good and it, it depends as well i would say on the individual like i mean for myself if i'm regularly trying to hit 500 grams of carbs a day um because i'm barely tipping this the scales of four thousand calories um it's not going to be practical for me to get that ultra rice and no exactly you you'll, be, you'll be sitting there with eight cart- cartons or tubs of food I would literally be like just backed up yeah and and like again you, at that stage you would try to get anything into you yeah but keeping that protein level up yeah I, I, I just for me it's it's I'm not com- I, I, I don't really like focusing on all my macros and yeah and I just there's no enjoyment in it, mm. and I it, it it takes it consumes my mind. And I I'm thinking like my next meal of like okay I've got to weigh that I have to do that. I I kind of know at this stage now what my protein level is and I know yeah. what I have to do, and then after that, my kind of rule of thumb is if I'm hungry, I have a bit to eat. If I'm already full, ease off a small bit. Yeah, I think oh, the there's. But I try and get people into the habit of like say even when I've, I've been doing a bit of coaching with uh, some initial test clients when I've been doing my personal training certification mm-hmm. disclaimer I'm not charging I know I'm not qualified yet <laughs> but anyway um, uh, what I've been trying to get people in the habit of is to initially get a little bit anal 
with the calories, with the carbs, with the fats and the protein, mm. just for educational purposes. And then, like what you're describing there, I think that just sets you up for a really education-based uh, kind of flexibility that you don't even have to think about anymore. Completely. And I, w- I went through three or four years of coaching mm. before I knew what a protein of fat or a carb was. Like, I heard everyone talk about it. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had the notion. Like, yeah. So I took it upon myself to get a nutrition coach and learn about it and it stressed me out because I was like I'm going to have to use my fitness pad and I'm going to have to input everything but within a month I knew exactly what was what was needed yeah. if I wanted I, I continued it for an extra three or four months just to see what I could do Yeah. but you do need to know what what your body needs and you do need to kind of learn about it and it is exactly that to educate yourself even if you'll never use it again, but it's great to know, and it's great yeah. if you have kids and you need to instill that information onto them. There's no point in be like, "This is clean food." Yeah. Like, pasta and turkey rashers is filthy to one person, and it's the cleanest thing ever to someone else. Absolutely, so yeah. Like I mean, it's. Are you really gonna feel guilty and bad every single time you go on a holiday or every single time that you go out on a date with someone and you're like having something that's meant to be made for enjoyment? Yeah. Like if if you understand what you actually need, it just allows you to like enjoy the good times, guilt free. Yeah. Um and work it into your plan. And and people go out and get a salad and each their own like I'm not a big salad person, but that's the best thing that they can see on the menu and it's the healthiest thing. It could be covered in dressing and could be the same amount of calories as I get in a burger. Yeah, and like, I mean... And the burger is what I need because I need the protein. Like, that kind yeah. of stuff. And I'm getting what I enjoy and you can't stop me. <laughs> yeah, you can't stop me. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I love. I tell it then, you didn't exactly take to the game changers. So. Nah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, that's another without actually brings me to another interesting topic about how fitness and actually the educational side of getting really into fitness deep I found for me that actually it was kind of like a sexy route into developing critical thinking so like for example if you want to get a good physique you actually have to go evidence based or else be blessed with like good genetics or good luck because otherwise it's just not going to happen yeah. and the um, l- learning to distinguish the bullshit from what actually makes logical sense is something that carries over beyond fitness. I think it's just so beneficial. Like, yeah, like if you want to go into physique, as you say, or into a show, you're going to an extreme of a sport. Mm. Like they're, they're sports in, the, in their own right. And if you're a rogue player and you want to go to the extreme and become a professional rogue player, you have to go to evidence base. You have to f- monitor your macros. You have to do all that. It's not your kind of Sunday evening. I'll do do this kind of stuff and, and not track it. If you want to go to the extreme, you have to be extreme about it. Yeah. And that's it. And but then, if you're doing that, I think it changes your mindset because you're kind of like, if I'm putting this much effort into this you'll see if you're slacking off on other things. Yeah. And I think it, it is brilliant and it, 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 it changes people because if, if you're going into like monitoring every calorie that goes into, if you're really relaxed about work, if you're really kind of this, it, I think it just kind of makes you slump in another way. Okay, so what you're saying is that you think that, uh, if I got this correctly, is that you think that the extremes can be damaging or do you think no I, I, I think the extre- extremes can be good to to make you work that bit harder in other, in other oh okay life. i get you to carry over those same kind of things that you learn from exactly so if, yeah. if you're going to an extreme for bodybuilding or physique or anything it'll then change your mindset and work and be like i'm putting a lot of effort in here so why am i putting a lot of effort in here it doesn't mean that if you're lazy with your diet that you're going to be lazy with this, but it just, it triggers, for me anyway, it triggers something and 
it can show that you can put a lot of effort into one thing. So why can't you do it into something else? Interestingly enough, I did find that like it, it helped with my perspective even on um, my own business, right? Where, you know, you see the success, success stories of the likes of, you know, movement that we discussed previously, which kind of blew up overnight, right? No, those guys had a, a good starting point because they're based out of Hollywood, right? Mm. You know, good area to be in. Yeah. If you're trying to make something that's going to go worldwide, be exclusive and all, have all the best content creators, great place to be in. And it's similar enough to like, if you want to try and get quick results in the gym, right? No, it really helps if you've got fucking insane genetics, right? If you're on a great starting point. Yeah. But if you're not in that place, then you actually, like for me, I just found that chipping away bit by bit by bit. It was like three years later, I kind of looked in the mirror and I was like, ah, starting to come together now. And I couldn't see it all along. Yeah. And I kind of even feel like that's carrying over to my business as well. You know, it's kind of like, recognizing that if you're consistently putting in the graft you're going to be in a better starting point or a better place than you were when you began like you know it, it it's not comparing yourself day to day or week to week it's comparing yourself month to month or year to year yeah and like this is why if like if, if i'm working with people i do get them to take a photo and i think photos are brilliant not the scales because you weigh yourself day to day or week to week and you're like i've got a pound yeah. If you look at yourself in a mirror, or if you look at yourself in a photo from month to month, you'll see massive changes. Yeah. And I think that's, again, it's it's unbelievable mentality, but if you, compl- if you compare yourself day to day, you'll see the smallest change in the world and you won't see the bigger picture. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I find that it's, uh, it can be more damaging than good to kind of self-reflect too often. Yeah. And that even is in self-monitoring your weight and everything. I think it applies definitely to business as well. Um, it can be beneficial at times, but too often. Yeah. You, yeah. It's, You're not it, going to see it's the changing your focus on. I have to improve, and if if, like, if you if you don't develop, from one week to an- another, we do all get setbacks. Yeah. And if you keep reflecting on that, it's it's just going to be damaging to you. I think definitely. I think progress isn't linear in either fitness or business. No, or yeah. life. No, no, in general, yeah, yeah absolutely. It's like, kind of like this kind of. There's up and down everything. There's shit days and there's good days. There's exceptional days and there's horrendous days. But, like, once we we always try to improve, then we'll get there in the end. I think. Well said. I think that's a good uh, good place to wrap it up. Yeah. Come here. Thanks very much, Mike. Not at all. Thank and you very much. Thanks for the plug and the shorts. I swear I didn't slip him a 50 at all. <laughs> <laughs> and you went out for the uh, night now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So where, where can people find you? Uh, on my own Instagram, it's Mike Ross CF. Okay. That's my own tag. And then my my business is Echo Athletics. Echo, Echo Athletics underscore Cork. It's a tag. Unreal. Mer, thanks very much, bye. Appreciate it. Pleasure having Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell notification for notifications. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best one. Yeah, yeah, yeah.